You want to have him sit down? We good? We good? And ready. Thank you. Attention in the media room. We have a special guest with us this afternoon. Four-time NBA champion. Two-time NBA Most Valuable Player. MVP of the 2022 NBA Finals. Nine-time All-NBA selection. A golfer with a zero handicap. An activist, entrepreneur, humanitarian. A man who definitely walks the walk and talks the talk. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the funny, one of the favorite guys we have here in the tournament, Mr. Stephen Curry. Steph, welcome. Thank you very much. That was an. We get that on. Did we get that recorded? I need that. Uh, it's it is recorded. That yeah, is you an got amazing that. introduction. Thank you. Well, thank you. Hey, let's. I'm gonna. <clears throat> we've got a lot of folks that want to ask some questions. I want to get the media folks up here to fire away. Um, first, and let's let's get rocking and rolling. But one question, Steph. You know, a lot of guys have been asking. Hey, they're they're thinking you've had a little bit more time to prepare your golf game this year. Uh, Marty Fish and Mo on Media Day said, "Well, Steph's not playing with uh, Justin Timberlake because Justin can't make it, so he might be concentrating a little bit more." So, tell us what you think about your chances for the American Century Championship. Um, yeah, I'm always excited to be here. I love the event so much. Um, it's become kind of a family tradition with. Now me, my dad, and my brother um, in the field. I got a, a teammate, Andre Godala here. So we just a lot of familiarity with the surroundings and just the energy that all the fans who come out and support it bring. Um, I'm obviously very confident in my game every time I come out here. And just a matter of can you hit shots. And one thing I'm going to do is going to have fun, you know, first and foremost, and enjoy, you know, the competitive environment out there. I think the key for me, obviously, is just hopefully getting off to a good start so I keep myself in it. Um, and hopefully with the the unfortunate extra time that I had with the, uh, the playoffs ending uh, a little sooner than I wanted to, um, the golf game will benefit from it. So we'll see how it goes. OK. Dan, you want to fire away? Yes, if I may. Hello, Steph. Um, yeah, Dan Hinksman. I do stories for the tournament here. Um, this This might be a little bit of a reach, but your good performances here, usually the following year, you've done really well in the NBA Finals. Is there anything in anything to that? Well, yeah, because that means that I probably, I think, I don't know if I'm following the pattern right, but last year we won a championship and I had probably three weeks uh, before I came here, which is a quick turnaround. The year prior, I had plenty of time to kind of, you know, <laughs> knock the cobwebs off and, and play a little bit more before I came up here. So I like that cycle. Um, you know, don't don't win a championship in the, in the league, play well here, then go back and win another championship out there. So on the court, that's uh, – hopefully I can manifest that uh, for the next, what, 11 months? That would be, that'd be awesome. Um, and then another one that, again, a little bit of a reach perhaps, when MJ was here, when he used to play here, he said that when he retired from basketball, he would eventually win this. And of course, he had other things kind of take his attention away. But do you sense maybe that that might be something? Is that is that a, I don't know, a legitimate thing, you think? Honestly, I feel like it's the way I kind of approach it and I feel like where my game is is I have the game to win it now. It's just a matter of can you do it. I can say it all yeah. I want to. I finished fourth twice, I think. Yeah. So it's in there. Um, it's just a matter of can I put it together for 54 holes and um, balance the fun and, you know, the focus that you need to have to, to play, you know, all three rounds and play great. So my goal has always been to try to do it as an active, you know, NBA athlete. Um, I got a few more years left to do it, so we'll see how it goes. And this next question was from yesterday. Did we have the long drive yet, or is that today? Oh, I won by one yard. I beat Patty. I beat. I'm telling. You, I beat Patty Mahomes by one yard. I don't know what's going to happen in the afternoon wave, but uh, I got him. I got him by a yard. Is that important for you to well, win I that? Swung, I swung like it. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. 
Hey, a couple of quick notes, Dan. You brought up a pretty good point as far as an active player. Only one active player has ever won this tournament, and that was Mario Lemieux many years ago. So, and I know Joe Pavelski came close <coughs> last year with uh, being in the playoff. He was in the playoff, right? Right, yeah. he was in the playoff. One other note real quick before we get to the next questions, and I know we've got some folks that are uh, on the phone as far as a Zoom call. We're going to take questions here first, then we're going to get to the Zoom call, folks, so hang in there with us. All right, Chris, would you like to step up? Staff Chris Biederman with the Sacramento Bee. Um, basketball question, a lot of moves have been made in the Western Conference over the last few weeks. Obviously, you guys made a pretty substantial addition, too. Just how do you evaluate what the Western Conference looks like going into the season after, after I, th I think a number of teams had a, what they would classify as like disappointing regular seasons going into the playoffs? How do you think the competition is going to ramp up this year? I think competition is always high. There's a few surprise teams every year, but you kind of know who the the top of the, uh, the top echelon of the West and even the East is. Um, obviously, Denver winning. They're a very complete team, and they played amazing. Jokic is, is, is awesome, Jamal Murray. So every other team is trying to make adjustments and trying to get better. Like, even when you win, you try to get better every year, and some moves are may seem drastic. Some might be a little, you know, fine tweaks, but I think every team is trying to take stock of what they have. And for us, it was about trying to, you know, make the pieces fit a little bit better um, to try to give us more versatility on both sides of the ball. And, you know, we understand our core is back and, you know, adding CP, you know, some other vets that were going to really help us, you know, fill out the rotation and increase our depth. We got two young guys who were in their third year, JK and, and Moses Moody, who are going to be, you know, huge, uh, have huge opportunities to, you know, take another step in their career. So that's where we are. And we feel like, you know, we, we, our team makes a lot more sense this year. Um, it's just a matter of, again, going out and playing, and letting the season kind of unfold and understand what we need to do to, to beat the best of the best in the West. So uh, there's a lot of good teams. And we want to be one of them. What do you think about the midseason tournament and the idea of single elimination, knock knockout type stuff in in the NBA? Not something we've seen before. I mean, it's it's fun for fans to have something else, uh, something new to kind of lock in on, especially early in the year. For us, it doesn't change the regular season schedule in terms of the amount of games we're playing. Just the championship game that you know, there's a lot on the line. Um, monetarily, you know, the trophy, the, the narrative of who's kind of the best team in the early part of the season. So it's something different. The venue in Vegas will be will be fun for a lot of fans to come in just for, you know, those those two, the semifinals and the, and the championship game. But it'll take an identity of its own over time. Um, it's hard to kind of predict what it's going to feel like or look like um, from a fan perspective, a player perspective. But I think for us as players, um, you know, unless you're in the championship game playing for the the prize money and the trophy and the pride and all that, it's still 82 games. So uh, it's just under a different, a different narrative. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, Tabney with Tabney Dozier Enterprises. Um, update on underrated. I saw some really good social posts with your nonprofit traveling with them this summer, empowering youth, increasing access to golf. Just love an update from you. Yeah, we're in our uh, currently in our second year. We increased the field that is um, coming to each venue that we have from 48 to 96 now, um, and that's. Uh, equal across both the, the boys and girls um, fields that we that we have. We have some amazing courses that have that are hosting our tournaments. Um, we were at the park in West Palm Beach last week. We we're at Firestone um, in Akron. They're going to Paiute in Las Vegas, uh, Chambers Bay in, in, in uh, Washington, and then they're coming down for the the, the Tour Championship at, at Lake Merced in in, in San Francisco. So. Increasing the field and, and obviously championship venues that are you know giving kids a first class uh, experience. It's been an amazing journey so far. We've had some amazing partners that have been a part of making this um, you know a success. DJ Khaled came out to a, a, a stop and gave the kids a lot of good energy. 
You have Butch Harmon coming to a, uh, a stop in Vegas to, to talk to the kids. We had um, Gil Hands come talk to the kids about course design and just his his, his experience in the, in, the, in the industry. So it's the competitive atmosphere that we give them, the competitive experience, but also trying to instill them some of the uh, life skills and workforce skills that can help them if even if they can't uh, or if, the, if professional golf is not in their future, but we, we also hope that there's a few that, that can crack um, the professional tours and get more representation on the, on the tours. No doubt. Um, and then just a life question. July is Minority Mental Health Awareness Month. I think about all of the hats and the roles that you wear, dad, son, champion, your job, but Black men don't often have a space to say, hey, I'm not okay. Hey, I'm not doing well. I would just love for you to speak to that because I don't think there's anything stronger than saying I'm not doing okay. What do you feel? Uh, I mean, all that needs to be, uh, I think, the access to therapy or outlets that um, can, can help through tough times or even, you know, just developing the right perspective on the challenges that life throws at you. Um, Kevin Love and DeMar DeRozan in our league have been huge champions of uh, promoting, you know, self-help and self-care and mental wellness and mental health. My sister's a, a, a huge proponent and champion of, of mental health awareness um, and has used a lot of her platform to speak on that. So no matter what background you have or what industry you're in or what level of success you've had, um, you have to take that seriously. You have to find the right space uh, to to deal with life and all the highs and lows, but uh, yeah, it's, it needs to be talked about more, and I think I think it is. Good, thank you. Okay. Hey, Steph. Uh, Cam from NBA.com here. Are there any lessons you take from basketball and apply to golf, and vice versa? Are there any lessons from golf that you apply to basketball? The next shot mentality is. It's huge. You got to have a short memory on both basketball court and golf. Obviously, basketball is a little bit more reactive, so you don't have much time to dwell on what's going on in golf. You have a long walk from the next shot to the next shot to, you know, deal with the thoughts that's going on between the ears. But that me next shot mentality, you have to have a bit of amnesia out there. Um, but also in both sports, when you find that flow just to be able to stay in that space for as long as you can and enjoy it and lock into whatever's um, producing, you know, the right shots, the right visuals that you need to see. And for me, when that ball is hitting the net every time, like there's no better feeling in either sport. Golf's a little bit harder to find it. Um, so you got to be a little bit more patient and deal with how, uh, I guess, how, how, uh, how the game of golf can humble you. So I think those are probably the biggest similarities for me yeah nice and you've achieved a great deal in the golf space uh you just won the ambassador of golf award funded the howard golf program and you founded the underrated golf tour what are you most proud of among your achievements in golf uh i think just the fact that uh i've turned a passion that i started playing when i was 10 and for a long time it was just about me playing like and who i got to play with and seeing how much better I could get at the game and you know, maybe showing up at a member guest or two and now to turn that passion into creating opportunity. You just mentioned four amazing um, either entities or honors that I've had. The fact that I'm being recognized for that effort so soon because I feel like I just got started on this journey of you know creating opportunity, scholarships, um, a platform for especially black and brown kids around the country that need to get golf clubs in their hands a lot lot earlier in life and developing a pipeline for them to you know, pursue golf at the highest level, but also get access to the world of golf that we, we all have benefited from in some way, shape or form, because we're all here. Like, that's, that's what I'm most proud of, I guess, in, in general, because it's, it's not easy to do. Um, and I've had a lot of great people and partners and 
sponsors and brands that have joined this mission with me. So um, I'm excited about where we are in the future. Mm. And I was talking to Butch Harmon the other day about uh, your session with him out at Cypress Point, and he was saying the biggest key for you is kind of calming the nerves um, when you plan the tournament tomorrow and through the weekend. Um, can you compare like the nerves that you feel, you know, stepping up to the first tee tomorrow at a competitive golf tournament to, you know, playing in a high pressure situation like the NBA Finals? I think I've said it before, I get way more nervous on the first tee uh, of any like event than basketball. You know, I still get butterflies and all that on the court, but that's my happy place. And as much as I think I'm preparing for the American Century Championship, I, I'm, I still know I don't know uh, all the ins and outs of what it means to learn the game at the highest level. And I'm, I'm, it's a, it's a never never ending journey on that front. So. It's no surprise that on the first tee, and even the adrenaline rush that you get through the four and some chain, four hours and some change that you're out there, um, I love it. And you, me and Clay played in the match against Kelsey and Mahomes, and Clay, I talked to him after, and he's like, I hadn't felt that much adrenaline, you know, in a very long time. So it's something about this game, man. I don't know how to explain it, but um, it, uh, it brings it brings a lot a lot out of you. Yeah. Thanks, Steph. Hey, Steph, good to see you again, man. Mike Stephenson here with Nevada Sportsnet. A few really quick ones. First of all, that one you hit on 13 last year, 97 yards out, splashed it in. Would you say that is the greatest golf shot you've ever hit? And also, would you admit how many times you've watched that video? <laughs> uh, it's it's one, one B to my only hole in one. So, but obviously it's one B just because it was in a tournament and it was out here and I just love this place and the reaction I got from the crowd. Uh, I watched it probably 40 times that day. <laughs> and I've probably watched it that many times since. So yeah, they, the people that, all my guys, my dad, brother, everybody who's staying at the condo with us, uh, they're probably sick of hearing the highlight, uh, the, the volume and the commentary just because how many times I watched it. But again, it's an out-of-body experience on that one. That's a great clip to have in your arsenal. Uh, if you could pluck a power from any of your fellow competitors, who would you want to steal an attribute from? I've asked a lot of people this. A lot have said your jump Marty shot. Marty Fish is are you on golf? I'm saying actually oh, in, in respective professions, yeah. So would you want, you know, Alfonso Ribeiro's dance moves or something like that? Oh, if, well, I want to answer it in golf terms. I want Marty Fish's tempo just because I just love watching him swing. Okay. Oh, he's right there. Look at that. <laughs> That was not planned at all. <laughs> that was not planned at all. It's the sweetest tempo I've ever seen, big fella. Um, Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, A lot of options. <laughs> only, what, Saturday of 2021? 2020. 2020, sorry. Yeah, that's 63. Uh, only for four hours. <laughs> uh, probably, I don't know. I, we're close in, in that respect, but I still just love watching him play. My home's just creativity. Just the way he sees the game. I feel like everything's in slow motion. He'd probably say the same about me, but uh, I, I love watching him play. If I was to be asked that question, I'd say I'll take your bank account, but that's all right. I, I don't get that's that fair. option. So. That's fair. <laughs> Last one, if it's not going to be you, who would you like to see get this thing done come Sunday afternoon? <laughs> uh, Wardell, Stephen Curry, the first. Del, Del Curry. Okay. I'd like to see the, the uh, we call him the originator. I'd like to see him get it done. Sorry, Marty. If, if you don't mind. I did want to ask you one quick more because we had your pops for Media Day via Zoom. He did mention the car ride you guys take over, and that's when the bet is determined. Curious what the bet is. But I also I did ask him about both Caleb and Cody Martin, two guys that we covered down in Reno for the University of Nevada, Carolina guys. Of course, pops was with them in Charlotte. Caleb just played in the finals. If you cross paths with those guys, what do you think about their respective games, if you know much about them? I've played against both of them. They're, um, they're amazing athletes. They have a toughness and a grit to them. Obviously, you know, the ability to make it in this league, especially at the wing position, is extremely difficult. And you have to kind of have that toughness and, and know how. And, and uh, yeah, I'm sure they've come a long way from when y'all covered them back in college. So uh, what was the first question? I forgot. Well, I guess, do you have the bet in, the, in place oh, at this point? Oh, yeah. We're still working on massaging out the, the handicaps. 
in the sense. I, I, I spot both of them points. Yeah. Um, I think right now the uh, the soft agreement is I'm giving my dad 12 points total and my brother 45. <laughs> so I got to play well. <laughs> Yeah, man. I got to play well. Hey, good luck to you, and we always appreciate you doing this because we know you don't have to, so thank you, man. Absolutely. All right, we thank you for that one question. All right. Uh, <laughs> All right, we're, we're going to go to the, the Zoom callers right now and fire away. Let's see what we got. Stefan. Okay, hey, Stefan. Stefan Bondi, you're I up. Bet, I bet it's Stephen. Watch. Is it Stephen? No, it is Stefan. Oh, no way. How do you spell it? Yeah, man. Yeah, you know, S T E F A N. When people ask me, I say, you pronounce it just like Steph Curry. There you go. So, um, so I, I, I do cover the Knicks, and I'm in, in New York, so I got a Dante DiVincenzo question for you. Um, you know, what, what are some of the things he did for you guys, and just what were your thoughts on him signing with, with the Knicks? Super happy, super proud of him. We had a good conversation last offseason when he was trying to figure out what he wanted to do. Um, I know he's coming off of injury and trying to find a situation that could – help him establish, you know, who he is as, a, as an NBA player and how much value he brings to winning teams. And he, he proved that above and beyond with us all year. He knows how to play the game. You can tell he, he won at the highest level in college. And the Knicks got a good one. And I'm happy that he, uh, he got his fair share of that CBA, too. So uh, it was good. All right. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. OK, we have Ian Begley. Ian, let's hear your voice. Hey, Steph, I'm also here in New York, so I have a follow-up on Dante DiVincenzo. Um, I bet you didn't think you had two Dante questions coming today, but how did he impact you guys, and what's your impression of him after spending a season with him? He's all about basketball. He's all about winning. He brings great energy to the locker room. Um, I used to call him the vet, even though he's still on the younger side, just because he has that kind of spirit about him. And uh, he plays way beyond his years. Um, he's good on both sides of the ball. He can play make better than most people probably, you know, realize. Um, so he fills a lot of holes on a t on a team. And he's he's not selfish in the spe in the respect of. I know he wants to start and you know be that guy, but he also understands where value can be created on. A, on a team, no matter what the the role you're asked to do is, and he 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 bought in right away, and he got he got rewarded for it. Thank you. Okay, do we have uh, Brian Jones? Did you have a question? I guess I guess not. That's it. I think that's about it. Hey, Steph, we did have one more for you though. You're uh, going off at. <laughs> Steph, uh, what's more pressure, hitting a game-winning three or beating your dad in this tournament? Uh, more pressure? Beating my dad in this tournament because the game-winning three, like, it's all confidence. You let it go. You live with the results. But I've made two. It had nothing to do with the, uh, the outcome of the tournament, but I had two clutch putts and two clutch holes on 18 to beat my dad uh, in years past. And... I've gotten more joy out of those than a couple of game winners Perfect. for sure, too. Thanks for calling in. We'll see you, see you next year. John Smoltz, we appreciate <laughs> that. Thank you very much. All right. Hey, Graham. Graham, I think you're up. Fire away, my man. All right. Awesome. Thanks, Steph. Thanks for taking the time, man. Just kind of following up on that question, what are, like, the text conversations looking like between you and your dad going into this thing, coming out of it, as far as that friendly fire sort of thing coming out of a tournament like this? So last year, uh, we, we used to have the, the lake bet, which um, kind of died off a little bit. But what I, what I did to replace it, I made these um, heavyweight championship belts for the, uh, I forget what I put on there, but it's the Curry golf belt that whoever, one of, whatever three, one of the three of us wins gets to take the belt for the year and the caddy gets one too. So all we get is just pictures of where that belt is in his house um, for over the past year. He has a nice little spot on his mantle that he uh, that he put it up. So I get all those pictures just to remind us who's got the belt and who's the reigning champ. And uh, You're talking you know, WWE style belt. Oh yeah, big big boy like the Canelo type. You know, walking in the ring. It's got some good weight to it too. So <laughs> you might see it on the 18th green on Sunday for one of us to take. We'll have our own. If, if one of us is not winning the tournament, we'll have our own. Uh, Championship belt uh, presentation. 
looking forward to it. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Okay, Steph, 12 to 1 odds you are going off at the uh, Caesar Sportsbook. What do you, I mean, what do you think of is when you're out there? I mean, you're, you've been off for a little while, and what are your, how are you looking at your chances for this one this week? Uh, I'm, I'm very confident golf is so, you know, fickle that way, if that's the word. Just you never know what's going to happen. Just come in with the right attitude and just try to have fun. Try to treat it like a tournament and understand how serious it is, but just try to have fun and play it like you would no, a normal round. And for me, like, I've gotten better as the days go on. So if I can get off to a good start and give myself a chance to be in it and kind of feel that energy, then I feel like I'll, I'll respond really well. Um, other than that hole out on uh, 13 last year, I had a rough two days to start, and I finished strong. So, yeah, just get off to a good start tomorrow and just have fun. All right. I think we're done in here. Steph, thank you so much for coming in. We yes, appreciate please. your time. And good luck this week. All right.